Uno de los mayores desafíos de vivir y liderar con propósito y pasión es entender que los propósitos de Dios para nuestra vida no pueden ser vividos parcialmente. Aprendemos a adorarle y darle el primer lugar en nuestra vida, a tener compañerismo, nos gusta el grupo pequeño, aprendemos que hay que hacer cada día más como Jesús, el discipulado, servimos a otros creyentes ministerio, pero el quinto propósito, el que es absolutamente indispensable, no lo ejecutamos. Porque usted puede hacer los otros cuatro en la tierra, pero el quinto, que es cumplir nuestra misión en el mundo, que es compartir a Jesús a través de nuestra vida cambiada, no a través de simplemente palabras, es el que tiene valor eterno, es el que Dios más anhela, es por el cual hay fiesta en los cielos. Y sin embargo, tenemos que aprender a hacerlo, pero primero tenemos que decidir en nuestro corazón si realmente queremos compartir al Jesús que ha sido hecho en nosotros, o ser simplemente agentes secretos del Evangelio. Otro 007 más en la banca anónima de una gran iglesia. Es el paso justamente en el cual el pastor Ron Silvia y su equipo a través de Purpose Driven Church Planting y lo que llamamos ahora nuevas iglesias, new churches o nueva iniciativa han empezado a desarrollar a lo largo de estos últimos cinco años. El paso básicamente de cómo aprender a lanzar nuevas iglesias, cómo aprender a relanzarlas cuando aquella fase no ha funcionado adecuadamente y poder exponencialmente desarrollarnos y alcanzar y cumplir nuestra gran comisión. En el mundo las iglesias vienen disminuyendo en número y el número de conversiones paralelamente a ello. Pero si una iglesia no acepta este reto, no vamos a ningún lado. La iglesia de Springs, en Ocala, Florida, ha decidido ser pionera en este proceso y poder conectarse con lo que estamos haciendo en Latinoamérica de una manera, llamémosle seminal o inicial, mediante eventos y redes de cocheo o de mentoría a pastores interesados en este desarrollo. Es exactamente donde Ron Silvia puede explicarnos con precisión lo que quiere decir exactamente esta pasión y este propósito puestos al servicio de la Gran Comisión. Creo que en implantar iglesias, tienes que estar enfocado en el evangelismo. Y así que cuando ves a las personas que vienen a Cristo en implantar, eso es infeccioso. And, and, and I, I hear Bill Hybels talk about the fact that we need to stoke the fires of evangelism in the local church. And that has to come with the leader. He has to have a passion for evangelism that he pours in and drives into his people. He has to teach it. He has to live it. Uh, they have to create the, the churches to be evangelistic. If not, you don't have a church. You have a country club. Existe una correlación entre la falta de evangelismo en la iglesia y el estado de salud y balance en la vida y el ministerio del pastor en la iglesia local. I think I think that a lot of pastors are not uh, don't lead their churches to be evangelistic because they're not evangelistic. Because they don't know what to do because they they don't want to go out on the edge. They'd rather be comfortable and and be with Christians and because Christians make them feel good, you know, to hang out and spend time with people that are not Christ followers. That's uncomfortable. ¿Cree que se justifica la afirmación o la excusa de que no se evangelice o planten iglesias nuevas por la falta de recursos, especialmente financieros y de didácticos? Uh, I, I think, I don't know what it's like in Latin America. In, in America, it's not. Uh, in America, there are a lot of resources. That's why we talk about coaching networks. That's why we, you know, we do training here, uh, because we want people to have the resources to start churches because that is where we'll reach the world through new churches, not through established churches. ¿Qué se requiere, Pastor Ron, para establecer redes de mentoría y de coaching entre los pastores de habla hispana? Well, I think I think the the best thing to be done is someone in Latin America needs to take the leadership to say I'm going to lead coaching networks. I think coaching networks are the, are the greatest tool for training, encouraging, challenging uh, new churches. And, and, but you need a leader uh, to take the same principles that we do here in the States, to take those into Latin America and say, let's, you know, let's put together coaching networks here and you know, put the, uh, the, a different skin on them, if you will, a different, but the same principles with a different skin, that you understand the culture. I don't understand the culture. Uh, I understand the principles, and I have a heart for pastors. Uh, and so I know, and I know how to build coaching networks. But you understand Latin America, and, and the, those two need to, to come together to start coaching networks. What place should occupy in the priorities of the pastor of the local church 
el dirigir la iglesia propiamente dicha o dar retorno a otras iglesias contribuyendo a su desarrollo mentorial. The, ki the kingdom mindset has to break because I think a lot of pastors have a kingdom mindset, but it's about their kingdom, not God's kingdom. And and the kingdom mindset has to break. Your kingdom has to fall, and God's kingdom has to be come through. And I think that's it's not about me. It's not about the springs. It's about what does God want to do now. God would say, I've entrusted you with leadership gifts. I've entrusted you with, with a heart for the lost. I, I, I've equipped you. I've allowed you to experience all these things. What are you going to do with it? Are you just going to keep it in one church? Is that really the plan? No, I don't think that's God's plan. Y finalmente, ¿qué se necesita romper en términos de paradigmas en la mente y en el comportamiento de los pastores para que sea posible plantar y evangelizar conforme al propósito de Dios? Boy. I think that what is true, especially what you just described to me, if, if pastors there want to take care of their churches, then there's probably a territorial mindset. I'm going to take care of my church. I'm not going to share. I'm not going to. And that, in a coaching network, that has to, that shatters that. That creates a kingdom mindset that we're all on the same team. We're all trying to depopulate hell. And so let's... Let's get together, let's share life. Uh, otherwise, what you have are, are uh, silos. You, you, have, you have pastors that are just in their silo, and, and there is a lonely pastor syndrome that kicks in because it, the pastors need friends. They, they need, they need uh, people that understand them and the world that they live in. And it's the coaching network that's going to bring those relationships because the real sleeper in the coaching networks for us was we thought we were just going to train them in principles and teach you know, deeper, take them what they learned at the conference and how to do it in their church. But what they really came away with were 12 friends that they can call, that they can email, that they can have a relationship with. And that's what pastors really need because most pastors don't have friends. They have people that attend their church and they look at them as a pastor and we like that. But when a crisis strikes in your life, who do you go to and where do you, where do you ask questions and who really prays for you? Who could understand the life of a pastor better than a pastor? Nobody. So that's why you need a network. You've got to have it. Thank you. Hemos aprendido esencialmente que esta es una decisión en el corazón. Que Dios bendice. Necesitamos visión, pero necesitamos también conectarnos con el llamado de Dios. Dios levanta líderes, pero Dios nos llama. Y cuando Dios nos llama, Él va a honrar. Es justamente lo que vamos a avanzar durante este proceso, tanto virtual como presencial, a través de los países latinoamericanos. Les habló Juan Carlos Flores, Liderazgo e Innovación.